Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I'm gonna be talking about Gravity Sketch a little bit. I've been using Gravity Sketch uh, for maybe a year or two, uh, and I've been trying to you know, put it into my pipeline uh, as I work. And there are certain tools inside Gravity Sketch that I use the most, and so I wanna share those with you today. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so um, so I'm gonna jump here into Gravity Sketch. Um, this is not going to be a full on sort of everything about Gravity Sketch. Um, I still don't know most of the things about Gravity Sketch, but uh, I'm at a point where I can start, but I'm able to start integrating, integrating it into my pipeline. And so little by little, I still, you know, learning a little bit as I go, but I just want to show you some of the um, some of the stuff that I normally use, um, which are still very basic. And I use VR as a method of sketching and blocking things out. And so I don't do any very specific modeling or anything like that. So I'm mostly using it to sketch ideas and get things started. And then I, I move into other tools like Blender, or 3D Code, or Photoshop, right? And so. I'll show you some of this stuff uh, right now before I jump into actually sketching the um, the mech. And so um, I'm going to start with a new sketch. Now, one thing is that uh, you're going to see uh, I'm left-handed. So if you're using Gravity Sketch, the things that I'm normally doing with my left hand, you're going to do it with your right hand if you're right-handed. And so things are going to be a little bit inverted uh, with me because I'm left-handed. And so now, you know, we're in the 3D world and I'm using my right heart um, finger here to press on this button here and um, sort of move pretty much my camera or the world, pretty much I'm moving the world um, to be able to see as I'm pressing and, and I can rotate around my model. So for example, um, and you know, I'll, I'll go through this stuff in a second, but if I have something here, I can grab here and sort of rotate around it, right? And with my left hand, I can go over and you can see this sort of like sphere that I'm making smaller and larger. This is for selection, right? So if I have all the object here, here I can put whatever item and I can make that bigger with my thumb in this hand and I can make my selections bigger, right? And this way I can grab with my left heart finger and sort of move things around, rotate them, or I can just delete them or change the color if I need to with my right thumb in this buttons here on my left um, controller here. And so you can see here that I have the uh, um, the color button and the uh, the red button, which is the sort of like undo button. And then I have this thumb um, that I can use for my selection and I have my, um, my index finger that I use to pretty much do all the act actions with whatever brush I have or tool. And then with my heart, um, finger, I have this button, which I can use to grab things and move them around. And on this end, the same heart moves my world. And uh, depending on the tool, I use my um, trigger finger to use for the tool. Um, the blue button, which I'm using my thumb to bring it, brings uh, this menu, which we'll go through some of this stuff in a second. And on the purple button, it is my, you know, the tools that I'm going to be using. So I'll go through some of this stuff um, in a second. But... That's sort of my controls that I have on my hands. Um, and so you will see me moving to those. Now, this sort of like floating window, you know, if I, again, this this spherical is my selection, right? So everything that I put in here gets selected. And so I'm gonna grab this and you know, as I'm grabbing it, I can press my, my red button to delete it. And so I'm gonna delete all this, right? So start from scratch. Now, 
every time I start a new sketch, there's a couple things that I normally do every time. And so the first one is I bring this menu and uh, this first button is for me to save, export, um, you know, my models. Uh, I usually save it on the cloud. Uh, that way I can just go in the computer and grab the files. This is some of the settings that um, that you can put on here on Gravity Sketch. Now, if I grab any of these menus or any of these tools, right, these windows here, um, if I grab them, let me change my tool here. If I grab them, I can grab them and take them out, and then I have a floating menu here, so I don't have to always go over here and find it. And so, um, so I can grab it here like that. And so... Um, some of this stuff I um, I change as I work, and so I keep it in hand here. So I can just, for example, this is my mirror um, option. So I can click that, and now I can do mirroring stuff, right? And so if I don't need it, then I can just you know keep moving along. If I need, I can come back here and then do that and sort of go to that. And so there's something that I use a lot: my mirror. This is the vertical lock. This means that I won't be able to rotate in the x axis right so it's always going to be you know standing like this and i can just rotate it on the on the z axis here and so uh that's the vertical log and that's usually what i uh use over here now preferences i'm gonna go over this um on this one uh sometimes i do sometimes i don't i grab my light and then i change the direction of the light just so i can see the model better if I need to, and so I can have my light floating there, and whenever I need to, I can come here, grab it, and then sort of change the angle and move it and see. And then the star would won't be talking about this. So, but normally I keep it like this, right? This is my my settings uh, window here. Um, now this is the settings here. Now this, the third one is your reference image. This goes linked into my account. And so for example, I can go into the cloud here and I can go into my Mac and I have some references here that I can actually grab, move into my space. So this is some of the uh, references that I'm gonna be working with. And so uh, these are really cool because I can just always grab it if I wanna see this. I mean, I can I can always, grab the image and literally I'm pressing both of my heart fingers and then stretching or moving my hands away and I'm making the image larger and so I can always grab it and okay so I need this and then I'm sort of like looking I can place this in a way that I want and so um I don't know what I don't need this I can delete it and so I can always delete them move them around and place them as I need to, right? Sometimes I keep them, most of the time I keep them sort of like small, right? And if I need to, um, if I need to take a, take a look at them a little bit bigger, then I can just bring it, take a look at it, sort of examine the reference and then put it back in. And so I'm, I'm, I'm pressing both my heart fingers and then bringing out or in to enlarge or um, make the image uh smaller but that's where the, your references will be um and you can just grab them and from there and you just put them there uh now prefabs this is uh this is pretty cool sometimes i use it you know if i need a human scale i can just grab it and put it in here and you're gonna see that if i look up this is a preview of where this is going to be placed, right? And you should like to put it right in the center of the world. And so if I would like that, then I can just press import models here. And um, and then there's a, uh, a scale person here. Now, every time I grab a model, and if I press my blue button here, you're gonna see it here. I go into edit mode pretty much. And so now I can move the these points here to sort of pose if I need to this character and then I press the blue button again to go back outside of that edit mode right and so um, I can easily uh, move this around but let's delete that and then uh, layers this is going to be my layers so usually I have this out and so the way this works is everything that gets created gets created into the layer that is selected so if I have multiple layers right and I create something here, 
and then I move to this layer and I create something here, right? Now this layer, this that I did here was on that layer. So because that one was selected. And so this one is on that one. And I can reduce the opacity here or lock it if I if I wanted to stay still. Um, but everything that gets created, it goes into whatever layer gets uh, selected. So we will, um, and if I want to delete a layer, I can always grab it and delete it. The same way I would delete a model, right? And so whatever was in it gets deleted as well. And so I'm gonna grab all this, delete that as well. Okay. Um, now, all this stuff, we won't talk about it, but that's the gist of all these settings and, uh, and here. Now for the tools, which is my purple button, um this one if you any of these you can sort of double click and you get this menu with different uh options and things that you can change the first one is a very now again i this is one of those things where i always have my tools outside like this loading let's move this out and so the first one is sort of like sketchy you know uh sort of like a pencil sketch um it has this sort of like tapered effect right and for this one and the stroke um you know you're gonna see this curve here and this options of the actual brush so this is sort of like a spherical brush which is like very smooth right and then this one is sort of like a square which had this sharp edges which this is the one that i use the most just because i like the the sharp edges of it um this is just like a diamond just kind of cool too and then the ribbon just like a flatter sort of uh, effect here. Um, now, for both the ink and the stroke, you can play with the stroke shape. So for example, on the stroke, um, you know, I can make it flatter and I'll select this uh, square one. So now this is more like a flatter stroke, right? And if I move down here, it's on the other direction. But if I keep it in the center, it's more like this sort of like cube sort of a stroke that you can get, which is kind of cool. I use that a lot. Now, uh, for the way you place these, you can select here. So this is more like a free flow type thing. You know, you can just press the trigger and it will do that. Now for the point mode, you put, you click on the trigger for the points that you want. Right. And depending on what you're doing, and if you want to finish, you're going to see that you have to press the other um, trigger here. Uh, depending on what you're doing, that's going to be useful. So it's really going to depend on exactly what you're doing. They're going to be essential, some parts that you will need to do that. Um, but it's really going to depend. And you can always play with um, with all this. I don't use them all the time, so I won't go too much into that. Um, the other thing that I use is this polar symmetry. So this is like a, um, like a radial mirroring, right? Or a radial array. So if I put five, you're gonna see up here um, that uh, that uh, I, this is like a preview of the stroke. So you can see that I have now five elements here and I can easily, you know, play with, uh, with this very, very easily, right? And I can increase the number and sort of play with that, right? And so uh, it's really cool, especially for like buildings and stuff like that, or some sort of ornate curvy thing. Um, you can use that a lot, uh, but it's very, very, very useful. Um, so that's the polish symmetry, and uh, you can do that both with ink and uh, stroke. Now for revolve, um, it is pretty much that, right? So you can see this circle. I can, uh, holding my trigger, create the shape, right? And if I choose the point, right? So I put a point here, put a point here, same thing, point, point, right? And then I get that. Um, very easily, if I press my right trigger, I can change the uh, center line of the of the riff of the revolve here. Um, you can see that if I zoom in here, uh, the the 
the center light right now is on this green axis. But if I use my right trigger, I get a new line, right? So this now I can I can place it um with my right trigger wherever I need to. So I have control where this gets created. I just have to uh um you know place it where I need to. So you can always change that. Now again you can change the you know if you want like an A-sided you know thing um six-sided which is kind of cool four-sided three-sided star you know why not um yeah very cool the revolve i use that a lot as well um now the surface is sort of like a planar sort of type modeling um you can change the curvature of the plane here um so the way this works is i'm losing my left trigger right and you can see that i get a line right pressing my left trigger and depending on my curvature of my hands and the distance right that you can imagine this being the initial edge of the plane and so using my right trigger i can i can sort of uh make this make it like a plane so for example like that and this is the this is a tool that i use the point the most right so now if i change to point mode with my right trigger i'm gonna I'm going to place a new point on the planer. So if I start here, right, right button, right button, right button, right button, right button, right button. So I can create something that goes around, right? And I'm sort of like moving and rotating my hands to match the angle. But I'm using my right, you can see that it turns blue to create a new set of points. And I'm sort of twisting my hands and moving them around and all that. So every time I need a point, I just press my right trigger here and this is a tool that i probably use that the most but you can also change the you know the angle of it so this is very uh steep here and this is more flat like that so that's that one there uh volume is pretty cool um this sort of creates as i'm pressing and holding my left trigger sort of creates like a volume um mesh here uh this is pretty cool if i use the 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 uh, square uh stroke here um you know this is kind of cool to sort of like create like stylized rocks right so i can you know do something like that and sort of depending on where i put or move my finger or my hand it's gonna create a volume Right, it's so very easy. I can create a couple of rocks here that are sort of like stylized and something like that. And I always grab this, move it around, move it around. If I want to duplicate something, let's say I like this shape, I can grab it as if I was going to move it, but then I press the left trigger after I grab it. So grab it, left trigger, and then I can sort of scale it if I want to grab it left trigger move that there left trigger left trigger left trigger left trigger right so i can easily um pretty much uh, uh duplicate things if i need to and i can rotate them as i'm grabbing them if i want to edit them the same way i grab them and i press the green uh the blue button here and i can Zoom in and maybe grab these points and move these around. Press the blue button again. And then I'm there. Right? So as you can see, you know, this is very easy for me to do uh, some sort of like rocky stuff. All right, guys. So that's it for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if you're interested in more content like this, I do have a Patreon that if you want to support me that way, I would really appreciate it. I really hope that you guys learned something a little bit more about VR and how you can incorporate it into your tool set. Let me know if, uh, if you have any questions or concerning in the comment section below. If not, I will see you guys in the next video.